think I covered that. Um, there's just something kind of interesting here. This is not a shelf. Oh, no? And you'll appreciate this. If you look carefully, I'll be back here in the end. You know, you pointed out they would use wood with steel strap because they couldn't afford rail. Yeah. Well, in this case, they're using wood with a steel strap because they had a gantry on here. Oh, wow. Okay. They could gantry the length of this to lift equipment up onto the track and then run the track and, then, yeah, and the equipment into the mine. Wow. Oh, so that's the mechanic's wife. <laughs> hey! Hey, Harry! How you doing? I'm playing hooky today. Got some friends with me? Are you getting a grand tour of mine? They look inside the uh, mill. I said, this is the gantry he was just talking about. So, uh, taking advantage of the time he's being social to check out some of the other stuff in here. Amazing how much stuff is still in here. This was to keep the tourist out <laughs> when we had to do that. Okay. Um, yeah, it all, at one time everything was uh, used or worth something. Old sheep wheels. Yeah, it's just incredible how much stuff um, is in here. Diaphragm pump. You can get a better look at the, at the motor. Oh, yeah. Um, There's a few of the other stuff. The there was a pile of air rams, and they used air rams on all the, the ore chutes. Huh. They would use an air ram. We had air down there. Yeah, why not? That you makes right? sense. Yeah. And um, you'll love this. Hello. Skill saw. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Skill saw. Right here. If you can imagine a blade on this thing, and it was a pivot arm, and it would pivot around, and they'd... Whew, right? Wow. I mean, it had to be one of the, I wouldn't say first skill saws, but... <laughs> Early days. Earlier. I mean, you know, I don't know what serial number, but what model. I'm sure, you can get an idea. The zero rough. model, zero 015, but skill saw. Been around for a while. Look at the size of that table saw, right? Yeah, that's amazing. Some old, old switching units, but um, in the back, there's a whole bunch of old jack legs for a different type of drill we don't run anymore. Oh. Hey, wow. And here's an old uh, sinker right there. Um, you've probably seen some of these. The old lead acid charging stations. Oh, yeah. All right, I might as well take you right out the back. And I'm not going to be able to see that one. This is now where our power comes in. Whoa. That's some juice. Yeah. Man. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah, this is this is all original building. So you see it's kind of leaning a little bit. Uh, because it bit. was built in 1917. Yeah. That still does the job though, right? Yeah. yeah. So. Wow. This stuff's probably original to that time, you know? Huge breaker. Yeah, that's a pretty big breaker. Look back here real quick. there up there that building up there that building there that was a substation that was just for the mine those were transformers the pg e would drop their power down here to the mine and the transformers right there powered everything oh wow yeah. 
What conditions the uh, superintendent's house in? Walkable. Walkable. Yeah. If you want to see it. Yeah. If you want to see it, beat feet up the trail. I can't miss it. Check it out. Yeah. If you want to do it. Oh, absolutely. You want a grand tour? I didn't expect this one, but you're gonna get it. Here's a closer look at that building. Yeah. Um. Yeah. If you climb up the hill over there, you can actually get a look in there. Oh, wow. You're the superintendent, right? <laughs> um, that was actually still used as a mine office up in the 1980s. Wow. Man, that's big. Well, okay. There's actually a standing pole huh. where the power would drop <clears throat> in from PG&E. See, there's one pole there. Yeah. Hey, pull, third pull into the transformers. You can see the, tra the top of the transformers right here. Oh, yeah. And all the insulators in there. Yeah, for sure. These are all, this is all part of the mine. Hey, remember, this is. Oh, these are Ford. They all they walk down every day. That would have been in good shape. Yeah. And then you not only that, you walk down and then you get a walk into mine. Yeah. Check that out. In that little building right here. A little hand pump. Oh wow. Yeah. You can't wonder, were they pumping water out of the mine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. You do wonder. So, so this just goes up, road goes up. Back to that pg e substation you passed. Ah, uh, the modern one? Yeah, right up to the top. Okay, so you used to stand this trail here. Yeah. Where's up to a modern well, uh, substation? You had, yeah. Well, left or right? Uh, well, take so a right. Okay, right. Go right real quick. Check that out. This was the superintendent's house. Pretty impressive. In case you didn't hear, this was the superintendent's house. Okay. Thank you. I haven't swept the floors lately. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, might need a little housekeeping. Just a bit. Any idea what this is? You know what? You tell me. That's a kid. Huh? Well, we'll yeah. find out. Yeah, you tell me. Huh? All right. Okay. Put a question to the viewers. All right, what is that? We're trying to figure out what this is. Towel rack? Huh? Yeah, I'm thinking laundry related. Uh, laundry? Um. You know, I don't know. Clacker? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I'm not something the audience will know. Yeah, I have no idea. All you. I see the stairs going up there. Well, yeah, open air nice, patio. yeah, nice open air patio right here. One of my favorite uh, frames to, to photograph is like looking through the broken windows and then the old cabin over the. Uh, oh, check this out! See all these records. Oh, wow. Is there a story behind all the records? I do not have that information. Huh. There's gotta be a story. Well, I don't know what do we got here. U.S. World, U.S. News and World Report. Oh, wow, 1981. I mean, I'm not that old. 81, 81, 80, 80. They really, uh, sold news and world reports on record. There you go. I guess that'd be pretty useful if you like it. Oh, 1979. Okay, bingo. Oh, look at that. It's not even a full vinyl. It's like a, uh, like a little podcast. August 1970. There you go. Early like, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be pretty useful if you're out, out here. You, uh, all you techies. You're out here in the boondocks. Yep. You don't have a phone yeah. or a... Uh, <laughs> it's interesting to see all these uh, cubby holes, the labels for them.
maid or housewife cooking dinner for them. Uh, you know? Look at this. I've been building them all. That's yeah. the modern. Yeah, that's there. 1800s right here. That's nice and modern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it. Oh, electric? Yeah. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> this would have been a really nice place to live back in its heyday. I mean, I would have changed the paint schemes. I don't mind this green, though. It's kind of nice. The pink. <laughs> this is actually a really good picture of seeing the cabinet here. they have been perfect to abandon the Americana kind of it. And all this has come down out here, unfortunately. You know, all the way on the other side of the canyon? Yeah. Okay. If you look down in the lower part of those red diggings, you see the white? Yes. 125,000 ounces came out of a quartz vein over there. It's called the Rainbow Mine. Wow. 125,000 ounces in the 1920s. 125,000 ounces out of one vein? Yes. Wow. Then... He's talking about... That little section right there, that's the Three rainbow mine right there. Underneath, down the canyon, trying to find the vein. What's the, what's the status of the rainbow now? Well, it's owned by the 16-1. I missed the last part we said. They, they own the 16 The 16 mine owns the rainbow. It was last work in the 1990s, and they found a few pockets in there, but not, no 125,000. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Oh, I missed the stove on the way in. Look how worn that threshold is. How many people walk through there? How many times have walked through these buildings that? were built? But hey, he's right there. That threshold that seems seen a lot of traffic. traffic. I had a raise dug from in the mine right up under his house. He'd slip out of his house, go down the raise, pop through his trap door, sneak right up on the guys. <laughs> Make sure they were working. <laughs> and. He could walk right by the hoist operator without ever being seen, which you'll see. Well, time, time does its magic. Yeah, sure does. Time conquers all. And wh which buildings were these? Uh, you know, it was all. This was all the owners and the superintendent's uh, property. Okay. Between these two. Uh, we do think that this is the actual building that had the spy rays connects to. Okay. Uh, nobody's been up it to actually find out. It'd be interesting if a fire so, ever came through to. You know, if you're if there. you're feeling froggy, <laughs> send you up the spy rays and find out what house you show up under. Because I can't see no <laughs> trap door in that other one. And that's all it was. It's not very big, and he slipped down. It was all laddered at one time. And, he could walk right by the hoist operator, go right down in the workings, and pop up behind you. Go, how you doing today, Jake? <laughs> uh, not getting any work done, are you? I bet the miners love that. Yeah. Definitely so sounds like something they they, scurry, they yeah. definitely uh, kept an eye on you. I mean, particularly when the majority of the gold coming out of here was high grade specimen gold. Yeah, I can understand they'd want to end up in people's pockets. Yeah. So I'm sure, some of it did. A lot of it did. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> To, and they have the money to spend to dig your own tunnel in the bottom of your house so you don't you just literally walk to work <laughs> right yeah it's not a bad commute is it and like i said this one here goes back up to that major pge sub sta uh, substation which was built for the mine <laughs> yeah one time sorry can you repeat that vic victolic vic we call them vic clamps and that one actually is a vic clamp okay. they use those on all the steel pipe for making the connections and I was explaining my spud wrench. When you, <laughs> not a very good match, when you unbolt those, there's a rubber gasket in there that sticks to the pipe, and you use your spud wrench to pull them apart. Huh. Or when you put them back together, help line it up while you get the bolt on the other side. But that's what they were using is all steel pipe. Right. And. Uh, so you can see all the change of directions, whether it's the four inch or the two inch, you change the direction with your change of direction, all your elbows and T's, and then you use all your Vic clamps to hold the stuff together right. for air and water. Uh, then as the cost of steel went up, then uh, well, what we're doing, we're actually running poly. Huh. You can get it in um, 
500 foot spool and then you just get a clamp on the end and cut to length, fusing machine, fuse, your, fuse all your utilities back together. You're good to go, huh? Sounds yeah. like You're good to go. So, all right, let me, uh... what's neat, this was a bifold door and somebody welded it shut. Welded it shut, huh? Well, I mean, yeah, uh, you're right. I see welded the, the bifold, you see the door in the, right. well, it's in the center, let me. Okay. Wow. There we go. Now that airline, right there, you see the port of concrete plugging in that airline came from these compressors and whew, into the mine. Yeah, shot straight in there. Now we run our poly. Oh yeah, air the right. water into the mine. Talk about right that stuff on the right right there. Yeah, right behind you. Our air and water is coming into the mine, and we run poly. A lot less maintenance. Oh, yeah. And cost. And have you ever wrestled a 20-foot length of steel pipe? <laughs> so, um, there were some questions on how they laid the track after they shot. And we can show you in the other drift that after you shoot, you actually have to dig the bottom of the floor out. Right. So I saw a comment. They go, well, how do you lay the ties? It's not smooth. No, it's not smooth. It's jagged and everything, and you may have to chip it out or break it out or scale it out and lay the tie in. And what the old timers would do is they'd have like a 10 foot stick with a one inch drop on one side, and they would get their one, actually, it wasn't one inch, so it was a one inch per 100 feet for drop because you want the car to be able to roll out. Right. So there's a slight decline facing us. So if I had a loaded car and came down there, I can actually push that thing out because of the angle. Right. So they had a 10 foot stick with, at that point, you're only talking just a minute bit of an inch. And they would lay that on the, on the ground to make sure that they got their, their drop. Um, so yeah, you had to dig out the bottom, lay in your tie and make sure you were at grade, which we were doing, we did on the other side too. Um, and that one, we have a real nice looking piss ditch, and they call it that for a reason. Um, <laughs> I've never known the uh, proper mining term for that, that ditch. It's a piss ditch, and uh, the miners did not go outside to go to the restroom. Well, that makes sense. Yes. So, if you want to... Nice meeting you guys. Oh, oh yeah. Fine. You too. Take Always care, sir. Next time, you guys later. I'm headed out of here. Oh, Don't yeah. worry about the big door. All okay. right. I'll close this one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So... However you want to work it, if you want to be the... I, no, if you want to... You don't want to look at my butt, get in there. Okay. Yep. All right, heading in. Yeah, this is what you don't want to hear. <laughs> yeah. A violent slam behind you. Some people call them bacon strips, some people call them mats. Hey, these aren't soggy. No. <laughs> these are not new. used to that. Okay, so there, there's your, there's the Y that we were referring to. Outside. The door of golden ore. The door ore. of golden ore. That was one of the shareholder tours right there. These are the portal, the top of the middle, the main haulage way for over 50 years. They would haul the ore out that way to right to the top of the mill. Yeah, this is all built by Mark Loving. Wow. This, this is all Loving's work here. I mean, the guy does real good work. Mark Loving's a He's been, legend. He, when we both graduated from high school the same year. Really? I started fighting fire, he started mining. <laughs> guys, the guy's been mining all of his life. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a pleasure to watch him work. It really was. That's so the, That's the portal we just came in. That's it. And uh, it was just saying that this uh, fork right here would go out directly to the old mill through there. Well, the spy race. I mentioned it, right? Yes. Yeah. How did the sh how did the superintendent sneak in on the guys? How did he? This is this is going to take a little tricky camera work and maybe a little light work. Okay. Now straight up here, huh? Straight up there. Okay. 
See that little, I don't know if you can back, you see that little wood on the side? Uh, let me back up here. Yeah. Uh, right there on the edge, yeah, uh -huh. on the right. That's it, huh? Look at this. Here was his door. Oh, wow. Right there. That was the superintendent's super secret door into the mine. That's funny. When we, when we were mucking up through here, we found it in the muck pile. Wow. But, so if you can imagine, he just slips down those ladders from underneath his house and comes down into the mine and starts walking in. And you'll see how he can get by the hoist operator and drop right down in the mine. And if he's ringing bells, the hoist operator's gonna take him where he wants to go. He don't know who's there. Right. So that's the spy race. Wow. That's what it was actually used for. That's funny. How far notice notice how narrow it is? Yeah. That's skinny. Yeah. That was just so he could get in and out of it. They weren't going for gold. That's funny. Feel free. Put the big boy light on. Yeah. Now what's interesting with this, there are different types of track work. Another razor. And that there. was another little raise there. You have the track with the full blown frogs and switches. This, this is a frog, by the way. This is called a frog. Anytime the track splits like that, that's that's a frog. Huh. And then all these help keep the train from the flanges on the cars staying on track. Right. Okay. This one's a little different. This, you have to actually manually. They, it they, they would have a, a switch bar, but so if right now if we're going off to that side, then you, which I don't think I'm going to do right now. Yeah, here we go. And just switched it. Here we go to the other side. This place, they're they're moving the whole track. Yeah. They're not moving. Just the little bar. Yeah. The bars. So I just thought that was kind of interesting because there's, there's multiple types. There's this one is the only one I've seen in here. You got a regular track switch down below, and then you get the, what we call just a flapping or a kicker. It's just one piece, and you kick it over. But, so there's a little raise. They did a little uh, you know, sunk on it there. Oh, it's a sump right there. But they actually sunk on the vein. Ah, they said yeah. sump. Well, it is a sump now. <laughs> Stalactites. Yeah. Looks like some yeah, flowstone really up there. Cool. I mean, you figured this was uh, 1800s. So all this was run on the 1800s, you said? Yeah. yeah. The the level above us was the original level that they Bradbury had established in 1896. And so they were mining this in the 1900s. So this level's been here a long time. Huh. Uh, we, we rehabbed uh, most of this in, uh, three years ago. As you can see all the new modern rock bolts and right. the poly airlines and everything. So, and we rehabbed the track, replaced it where we had to. Timber right there. interesting is these utility hangers are old drill steel ah. and that's actually square drill steel and it does have a water hole in it but what's even older are these which do not have a water hole in it and they actually slotted the steel to allow the tailings from the hole being drilled to slide out down the steel. Wow. So no water, the silicosis. Yeah. And they call those old air drills widow makers. I don't know how long they'd live before their lungs would give out. Wow. But, I mean, just to show you right there that that's, that's old, old for steel. Sure. For sure. So for those of you viewing the uh, battery diet, so to swap it out, and he was saying that we're kind of on the uh, 16 to one shaft up here, you know, it's technically a winds. And then we were talking about some of the, uh, Geology over here. Yeah. We've got calcite. Yeah, calcite with calcium leaching out of the rock. And in fact, that one's really neat. You got some really neat little stalagmite tights there. Yeah. Because stalagmite means it's mighty and it's grown up out of the floor. You won't see them because um, they get stepped on. <laughs> uh, but see, there's one there. Yeah. How about that. 
There's one right there. There's a mite. That's lag mite. And he's trying really, really hard. Or it, right? Let's work on it. There you go. Yeah. So, but, um, so here's, ooh, hey, look at this. I can use that. <laughs> um, hoist room. Shaft. Well, you gotta see how they hoist it up and, and down. So you gotta think, look what we did here. They're going off that way. Hoist room's here. And that's the hoist room. And there There's is the, the winds. The winds. Right? Or shaft, as they call yep. it. Yep, or shaft, 16 one shaft. And they they pulled the hoist out of here in 68, and that's a raise right over the top of it. So you are in a three-dimensional ground here. Yes. You never know if you have something below you that may give out or something above you, <laughs> or you might just be literally feet right away from another drift. So this one here is, is really interesting. Yes, it is. So, you have I guess. Thank you. So this was set up for the shareholder meeting a couple years ago, so we do have some informational stuff here. That's convenient. Yeah. Well, we never, we never picked up. So that, you can see the foundation yeah. right there. The motor was mounted over there. Oh, wow. And then the hoist assembly here. And then they shot the cable right up over a sheave wheel. Uh -huh. Right here. Okay. Now, right there, uh, if you can see that, can you see the black streak on the top? Uh, right oh, there. yeah, yeah, that's where the oil ran. Huh. They, absolutely. Good call. When they go up there and oil that, oh, they will fly off the sheave wheel right yeah. there at the top. Wow. That's really so, cool. But you see we got a little serpentine in here? Yes. You can see that little separation and that's why it's all... It's all coming down coming here, yeah. Down. Yeah, yeah. The serpentines are really crumbly. Uh, Bad ground. So the guy, he just sat in here. He had, he had electric lights. I think there's still... There's power right here. There's power there's, right there. Sorry. Yeah, feel free to... Uh, Let's get in your way here. Ah, thank you. I like your style. There we go. <laughs> foundation. And... Um, so not only that, it pour concrete foundation on the ground and bring the hoist in here and assemble it. That's that oil strip he's talking about. And uh, here's a better view of the uh, oh, there's one. hoist foundation. And I noticed when we were coming in they had lights. that they had right here, huh? a little copy of the signal code here. Well, uh, that's actually a Nevada chart. Ah, okay. The 16 to 1 shaft goes to the 1300 level, which we'll be seeing today. Cool. Very cool. So the sheep, that's the shaft. As you can see, the sheep wheel was right behind you. Oh, see how they all yeah. lost it up? So there's the other side where we just were. You oh, see the oil see, there. You can really see the oil now. Yeah, it's really okay. clear. And right here, there was a big, can you imagine a big wood hopper that would come down and they load the cars right here. Oh, wow. So. Oh, wait, it's not filled with water. That's a, no, it's not. So. So there's looking down, yeah. yeah. It drops off really steep here and it, it starts to level out down the lower end of the mine. Huh. But yeah, I guess the vertical right there. You yeah, can see. very vertical. Um, what you shouldn't do when you're doing shaft work is weaken the sides of your shaft. But it was so rich in this area, as you see, look. Oh, they couldn't they, resist. They could resist. Uh, they went in and they went in and right here they went in and they went in and they right there and there and they poked all these holes all along the side of the shaft. Instead of making one level and drifting off, they were punching in everywhere, and they found a lot of pockets between here and the 800. I'll bet. So, yeah, I'm sorry. There's gold there. We're going to take it out, and they took it out. Yeah. But that also weakens uh, the shaft. Right. Which you normally wouldn't do that. You would go about 100, 150 feet. Some people go 200. The, our typical levels here are about 125 to 150 feet apart to allow you to stope on them, and you stay away from the shaft. Here, they went down and they found 400 ounce, 700 ounce, 1,000 ounce, all the way down. Wow. Um, there's that yellow sulfury, and right there, yeah, I told you a bold bug got stuck in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, yeah, like maybe 100 years ago, who knows. That's funny. Um, but it's just interesting because of the, uh, the color. Yes, it is. Um, it's usually, yeah, it's very pure white. Yeah, so mixed in. you see this? 
I'm no geologist, but this was explained to me by somebody that knows his stuff. This is a dome, okay? It's a dome in the, in the rock. And through a very educated individual, and you see all those rust spots? Yes. That's our arsenopyrite, okay? That's associated with gold. All these rust spots, it's actually a cube of arsenopyrite in there. And this dome is what gave them the indicator that that's why they wanted to sink the shaft right here. Because why did they sink the shaft here? They don't just randomly sink the shaft. When they were tunneling in and they could see the geology of this, and this dome and the arsenopyrite they were running into, they sunk the shaft right here. And they took it all the way down and over the years. They went all the way down to the 1300 level. So, that's a long way down. And I don't know if I can... Is that like garbage out there? I just broke off a chunk. can't really see it. Not in this one. Some of them you actually get it open and you see the cube inside. Huh. But that's the arsenopyrite leaching. Oh, look, there's one right there. There it is. That's an arsenopyrite cube, which I just smeared. They actually do form in perfect cubes. Huh. And that's the minerals leaching out of it into the surrounding rock. That's fascinating. So, um, some people might call this, this gobbing. Oh, it's not, you wouldn't call that gobbing? They can and do, but yes, you do not want to haul all the rock completely out of the mine so they determine it's waste rock and they will stack it. Yeah. Can't blame them for that. Yeah. You don't see it a whole lot. There's a place in the tightener I'd love to show you. We could be here for weeks. Like I think you said before, you can bring a sleeping bag and <laughs> stay in here all the time. There are some walls up there that are 10 feet tall and look like a, a mason did it. Wow. It's, a, it's just incredible. 